Texas in a Bible study in preparation for a reverse mission trip led by the college chaplain, who's Presbyterian, um, to Nicaragua. And the goal at the time was to go and actually learn from people as opposed to, to just go and help or, or take something. <clears throat> I mean, we had stuff to, to share, but it was really more about that interchange, that cultural interchange, right? Um, and in preparation for that, I remember the lesson of the fig tree, um, the fig tree that Jesus curses, uh, was one of our Bible study questions. And for whatever reason, growing up in the lectionary church, going to church virtually every Sunday, I heard that cursing of the fig tree with different ears, which is one of the reasons why I think like engagement with scripture like over your lifetime is really important because you're different even if scripture maybe isn't. And so you might hear things and see things that you wouldn't otherwise. But I was just fascinated by this, and I kept asking the chaplain, tell me more about this particular issue. Um, finally, it was clear that I was pushing it more than anyone else in the group. And he said, let's talk about that. And so he came up and he said, you know, those are really great questions. Those are the kind of questions that maybe you might want to explore this in so um, kind of planted the seed and, and mom planted the seed too when I moved to Austin, Texas. You know, there's a seminary there. Uh, I was moving to try to get a year of um, being back in Texas to get in state tuition. I was going to go to law school at the University of Texas. And I got in my head at the idea, the idea that I would also do this Master of Arts and Pastoral Ministry at the seminary, which would make me a caring lawyer. Um, God had other plans. Um, so I, uh, I ended up not getting into law school, which was shocking to me, and uh, on a kind of a weird technicality, went to go, uh, still had an interview at seminary, and the interviewer said, you know, listening to you, if you had full-time availability, we had this other program called the Master of Arts in Religion, which you take classes with the MDiv students except for a couple of them, and uh, you graduate in two years, you write a thesis. Uh, and of course, there's uh, scholarship money available for that, and I said, I have full-time available. <laughs> uh, so I started that in my bishop in Western North Carolina. Again, it, this I think about this a lot now, occupying the, the office, right? Um, he made a way, and, and, and actually, he, if it weren't for his encouragement, I probably would not be here today. He, he said, I really want you to consider being in the MDiv program, and I really think you should consider being ordained. And I said, Bishop Johnson, thank you. Um, but I, I don't know what a call sounds like. I, I, don't, I don't know. If I, if I were saying yes right now, it would be just because you said so. I'm not feeling any, like, I don't know what that would mean. But I, I'll, pray, I'll pray about it, is what I said. And I did. I wake up every morning and say my prayers, and eventually got to the point in which, uh, I mean, every day I wake up, I go, should I be a priest? Should I, should I really be in the Indian program? And each morning it was like, maybe, maybe not, maybe so, maybe not. so. Until one day I woke up and I said that and it felt like it was untrue. That's all, that's the only way I can describe it is that it was this, giving that answer did not feel right anymore. Uh, so it wasn't like a voice that said, you will be ordained. I mean, that would have been awesome in some ways, maybe a little freaky. Um, but it was more of that sense of diligence and prayer started to reveal more truth. Uh, and I also listened to my classmates, my professors, who were like, how are you not going to be an indifferent? How are you not going to be a priest? Like, we see these things that, you know, would serve the church well. And I'm like, well, you say so. But I, I had to know for myself. Uh, I appreciated that support, but ultimately it was a, about being willing to submit my life uh, into God's hands and trust that whatever would be would be right. And um, it's not been the easiest journey. Um, I've been led into some places of service in the church that are unique and strange, and yet um, being here among you, it feels like the formation that was right to be able to be your bishop at this time. So I'm really thankful to be here. Thankful for like continued prayers of, of discernment and opening up to where we're called to be uh, and who we're called to be in God right now. And Miguel and Nina know this well because they're with me a lot 
we've traveled to, to different congregations and there's just so many amazing things that God is doing in the Diocese of California. There's a lot of work that we have to do to make sure that that work shines and is primary, right? Uh, a lot of relational work that we still have to do. But um, gosh, I'm excited about the fact that we have the gifts that we have in this diocese. And I think, I think God can do pretty amazing things among us uh, as we keep growing together.